Hello, hello, hello guys, and welcome back to Joe's Ventures, and today we're going to be doing part 96 of our Planet Zoo Mod Spotlight, so we'll take a look at some of the wonderful mods people have been making, and then we use them to talk about some of the wonderful biodiversity that we share our world with. And today we've got a very monkey-heavy episode, and we've got a couple mammals and a reptile, so it's going to be really, really cool to talk about, a couple returning ones, and um, an extinct species, as you see from the um, thumbnail which we'll be very excited to talk about. But all of the monkeys that are done today have been done by Mega Kebab. Uh, Kebab. So if I don't remember to credit them properly, just remember all the monkeys are by Mega Kebab, and then I'll make sure that the rest are credited properly. So we're going to be starting off today with a smaller monkey, which is pretty cool. We've got here the Greater Spot Nose Monkey by Mega Kebab, as I mentioned. So uh, let's, let's have a look at you over here. So the Greater Spot Nose Monkey or the putty nose monkey are actually one of the smallest of the old world monkeys and is a ganon in the genus um Cetopithecus, uh, or Cetopithecus, uh one of those uh smaller ganons and things like that and they are native to western africa and live to some extent in rainforest but these guys actually are more often found in the transitional zones between savannas and rainforests so they're a very specific niche that they got going on there which is very very interesting these guys are also primarily uh, boreal and often are associated with monkeys of other species as well. So typically can be found with other members of the species, other uh, other species as well. And they get their name the common um, the common names like both of their common names comes from the white nose that they've got there because they've got a white spot on their nose or it looks like they've got putty on their nose. So that's kind of where they get their name. So pretty interesting little uh, thing about them. So in terms of their uh, groupings these guys typically live in social lives around a group of one adult male with a number of females and their offspring and little research has actually been conducted on this behavior but they seem to communicate mostly through um, auditory um, behaviors so they make sounds and communicate to each other like a lot of the monkeys the main calls that males use will be like a boom a pyok or hex which can be used in a number of contexts to talk to each other also like alarm calls to um make aware of predators and things like that so um yeah and in some other species of monkeys the acoustic structure of the greater spot noses monkey alarm calls have actually been argued to vary across the types of predators spotted so they will combine different sounds in a sequence and they have a different meaning depending on the sequence of sounds so almost like a specific warning so it could tell of a different predator things like that and these guys are still quite common they're considered near threatened um, because of uh, obviously changes in habitat around Western Africa that can impact them, but they're still quite common and uh, doing okay, so that's why they got the near threatened um, uh, ICUN rating or IUCN. That's it. So, yeah, Megan Kebab did a wonderful job with these guys. Don't know why I was spinning around like that. But uh, next, moving on to another monkey, we've got the Lahozets monkey. So, a really cool monkey that we get to look at over here. Let's look at you. How beautiful you are. So these guys are also known as the Mountain Monkey. They're another Ganon from the Upper Eastern Cong uh, Congo Basin. And they get the name, obviously, the Mountain Monkey because they spend a lot of time in mountains. And these guys typically live in small female-dominated groups. And they get uh, they can tell them apart from other monkeys because you can see here they've got a dark coat with that white beard there that really tells them apart from other monkeys. So these guys were formerly in the genus Cedapithecus, but um, showed that these guys are at their own kind of uh, genus. Uh... Adotroboas, I believe you say that. So you can see here they've got a short, like dark brown coat um, with a chestnut color across the back and a dark belly, as you can kind of see here. Very interesting color to them. And they have light uh, gray cheeks and a pale mustache. And you can see they have a white bib there that really gives them kind of like that really um, distinctive look of themselves, which is really cool. So uh, in body length, these guys can get about 12 to 27 inches, or 32 to 69 centimeters long, and have a tail that's between 19 to 39 inches, or about 48 to uh, 99 centimeters long. And uh, males can get quite big. Uh, the males weigh about 6 kilograms, or about 13 pounds, while the females are smaller at about 3.5 kilograms, or 7 pounds. And um, they have a long tail that's hook-shaped at the end as well, and you can see they're um, both fully coated with... Uh, they are born fully coated with their uh, eyes open, so another really interesting cool about these thing about these guys is you can see the cute little babies here. <laughs> so let's have a look at you while you're sleeping. Uh, anyway, these guys are typically occur around the Northeastern Democratic Republic of the Congo, uh, Rwanda, Burundi, and Uganda. 
And they're a forest monkey and like to live in moist, uh, high primary forests in the mountains. So that's where they get the name mountain monkey. But they will occupy uh, a variety of forests, such as like wooded savannas at mountain slopes, forest borders, mature lowlands, things like that. And they will also live in cultivated land, which is pretty interesting. And while the mountain areas will, they frequent uh, mature tangled undergrowth beneath the canopy. That's what they kind of like. They like areas with lots of undergrowth and mature forests, which is obviously it can be a bad thing for uh, when people chop them down, of course. One study showed that this population uh, only above 900 meters or about 3,000 feet, but some found it as low as 610 meters or 2,000 feet. So they typically like to live at a higher elevation. Really, really cool though. So in terms of their social structure, these guys live in fairly small groups that are dominated by the females and have only a single male. The females in these groups are usually related, but then the male will kind of stay around for a couple of weeks or at most a couple of years and then go off and find another group to live in, uh, which is pretty cool. You see, you can find one climbing around. There you are. What did you climbing around doing your thing? Anyway, so they are mostly active during the day. And the males will make these really loud calls to like call out to each other and stuff. And during the day, they hang out and do that. Mostly during the early morning and late afternoon, they will sleep in the trees and in a sitting position. And they will hold each other or branches. So that's pretty cute. And when they're alarmed, they seem to, um, or, or they see they're being observed, they will flee and take shelter in trees and then become very still. And they are mostly a terrestrial species and are quite adept climbers. And in terms of reproduction, as we look at this cute little baby here, probably talking to mum, uh, they breed seasonally, and the timing depends on the air area, just depends where you are. Uh, after about a five-month gestation period, typically a single baby is born. Uh, a mother gives birth typically at night, and uh, wherever she happens to be at the time. And births usually occur, occur during the end of the dry season, which uh, allows lactation when the rainfall is highest. And um, she will eat the placenta and lick the baby clean uh, while it hangs on, onto her belly. And the other females will also show much interest in a newborn and try and hold it. And after a few months of nursing, uh, a few months the nursing becomes less frequent. Um, and then they continue to care for the baby for about two more years. And um, if they're male offspring, they will leave the group when they reach sexual maturity. And they're actually quite, li quite long lived. So like captive individuals have been known to live more than 30 years, but it's very really likely in the wild. They don't live nearly that long, which is uh, pretty sad. But of course, um, that's just how nature is, I suppose. And in terms of their diet, these guys are mostly herbivores, but they will eat fruit, mushrooms, herbs, roots, and leaves. And they will occasionally eat bird eggs, reptile eggs, lizards, and small birds. So they're pretty generalist in that regard. So that's pretty, pretty cool. So that's our next monkey, also done by Mega Kebab. And we've got another one coming up. Uh, the Collard Marge, also done by Mega Kebab. <laughs> really, really awesome uh, to see some more monkeys in the game. So this is the Collard Marge, or the Collard Marge, also known as the White Collared or Red Caped uh, Marge B, I would say that, I, I believe. Uh, these guys, you can see, they've got a grey fur covering their body, but their common name refers to the colour on the head. So they have a red cap on their head, where they get the name the um, Red Cap uh, Marge. And then they also have a white collar where they get the name the Collared Margabe. Um, I'm going to say Mangabe, I'm going to commit to that. Which they get their names from. They also have uh, dark face and eyes and things like that. And they have like a lighter underside as you can see here with a darker body um, on the top there. And um, they have a white tip to their tail as well which really gives them an interesting look. Uh, they could typically get... Uh, an average body size for um, captive individuals ranges about 9 to 10 kilograms or 20 to 22 pounds in uh, males and 7 to 8.6 or 7 to 17 to 19 pounds in females. And they typically reach a head to body length of about 47 to 67 centimeters or 19 to 26 inches long in males and about 45 to 60 centimeters or 18 to 24 inches in uh, females. So these guys are, are found in coastal swamps, mangroves, valley forests from western Nigeria, east to south into Cameroon, and they can be found in Equatorial Guinea and Gabon, and they can be found on the Gabon-Congo border on the Atlantic shore, which is pretty interesting. So the collared um, Magabe actually lives in quite large groups. They can live in groups of up to like uh, 10 to 35 individuals, which includes several males. And uh, vocal communication in the form of like barks and cackles have been used to keep the group in contact with each other and so they can tell each other's position. Um, 
in terms of their diet, these guys typically feed on, feed on fruits and seeds, and they uh, typically eat like leaves, foliage, uh, flowers, invertebrates, dung and gum and mushrooms, and really they're omnivorous, they can get whatever they get their mouths around really. And um, these guys have no defined breeding season, but uh, they've reached sexual maturity at about 5 to 7 years of age, and they have an average gestation of about 170 days. And in terms of threats, uh, it's actually estimated that about 3,000 um, coloured magabaves are hunted on the cross um, Sangana and Binko uh, coastal forests because of the bushmeat. And this is part of the reason why they're considered endangered. And they're considered endangered because of due to habitat loss around the area and being hunted for bushmeat, which causes decline in their populations. But they are likely considered endangered and there are people trying to protect them, them and their habitat. So really, really cool species. Definitely am a big fan of these guys here. So another one done by Meg the Barb. Really done a nice job. So we're really smashing out these monkeys. We're getting them out. So let's start with the next one. So we've got here next, we've got... Uh, the Allen's Swamp Monkey. <coughs> Let me just cough a bit. Here we are, Allen's Swamp Monkey. So um, these guys are a species of Old World Monkey and the only member of their genus, Allenopithecus. And they're actually named after the American zoo uh, zoologist Joel Aspid Allen. And these guys live in the Congo River Basin and the Republic of the Congo, as well as the Democratic Republic of the Congo. Uh, a lot of those areas, very like central um, Congo rainforest area. So these guys are a rather strongly built animal, and they actually have slight webbing in their fingers and toes, which shows that they're partially adapted for aquatic life, which is really cool. Uh, as an adult, an adult um, swamp monkey can reach about 45 to 60 centimeters uh, in body head to body length, with a roughly uh, 50 centimeter tail. And males can weigh up to 6 kilograms, and basically twice the size of the female. So a female on average is about 3.5 kilograms. So... Um, they do, males do in general get quite a bit larger in terms of um, their activity though these guys are diurnal so they come out during the day and they regularly come to the ground uh, and swim for food and they inhabit like swampy water rich areas and can swim very well and can dive quite well as well and they actually use that to avoid danger so they'll dive and uh, if a predator comes like let's say a bird or something they'll dive down and use it to avoid predators which is really fun uh, these guys also live in very large social groups so these guys can live in groups of up to 40 animals and they communicate with many different gestures and um, calls and um, different touches to try and communicate with each other, which is actually really, really awesome. And these guys have a quite varied diet of about fruits, of leaves and beetles and worms. So pretty generous in that regard. They're pretty just whatever they can find. Pretty much just eat whatever they can find. And... Um, these guys also, uh, there's little known about their mating habits of the species, but the females will bear young and then they will be uh, weaned after about three months of age and then they mature at about three to five years. And these guys have quite a long lifespan and can live for about 23 years. And natural predators for these guys are raptors, snakes, and bonobos, believe it or not. People like to think bonobos as kumbaya animals, but really they can be quite nasty predators. Uh, these are natural predators of the Allen's swamp monkey. And they're also hunted for their bushmeat, bush but luckily they are still considered least concerned. They're still quite a common species, so I'm not sure how well that's been assessed. Maybe they could be put in, you know, threatened if uh, hunting is really a big issue for them. But they seem to be doing all right. Really, really wonderful species. Nice to see the Allen Swamp Monkey. Another one done by Mega Kebab. So really done a wonderful job there. So uh, next we've got the Deanna Monkey as well. Also done by Mega Kebab. I'm sure you're going to get annoyed at me talking about him very soon. So, uh, really, really cool monkey here. So, these guys are another old world monkey. A lot of these are old world monkeys, of course. Uh, these guys live in the high canopy forests of, like, Sierra Leone, uh, Liberia, and places like that. And they got their name because of their uh, white brow that resembles the brow of the Roman goddess Diana. And these guys are another species of Ganon. They have, like, a black-gray color to them with a white throat uh, and uh, crescent-shaped uh, brow band and rough and beard and all that because I mentioned these guys are found in West Africa and um, these guys in terms of their habitat they typically live in primary forests so these guys do not really thrive, thrive in secondary forests and they're considered endangered because of that because they like that primary forest that has mature trees and lots of biodiversity they are severely affected by um, uh, 
uh, habitat degradation. So they're pretty much already almost completely confined to um, coastal areas now because it's really they can only find the habitat. And also they are hunted for bush meat like other species of monkeys, which is obviously going to hurt their numbers. Uh, in terms of their size, these guys get about 40 to 55 centimeters in length. Uh, excluding the tail, uh, which is a uniform like 3 to 4 centimeters in diameter and about 50 to 75 centimeters long. In terms of uh, weights, adults get between 4 and 7 kilograms, so they are quite a um, decent sized monkey, decent sized animal. You can see they're generally black and um, dark gray, but they have that white throat there, white chest, and a crescent shaped brow band, and the kind of roughened beard. Where they get their name, as I mentioned, they get it from the brow of the goddess Diana, which is pretty interesting. They've also got like this uh, reddish uh, tint to their back here, and they got an orangish like chestnut color to their butts here, which just really gives them a really interesting color color to them. So, in terms of also their uh, ecology and their behavior, these guys uh, may actually live up to twenty years, and they're mostly active during the day, like a lot of other monkey species. They feed in all levels in the canopy, and they really do come down to the ground. Uh, Diana monkeys uh, also retreat to the upper le levels of the trees at night. They do not really make nests. These guys are pretty generalist. They typically feed on fruits and insects, but they'll take young uh, leaves, flowers, and invertebrates. And they are preyed upon by crown horn eagles, leopards, chimpanzees, or common chimpanzees, and humans. So they are kind of a mid-level uh, in the food chain. They're also quite a noisy presence in the forest. These guys have lots of very um, complex sounds. Uh, their marked coloration also sh uh, is also used in a wide range of social signals. Uh, so that's why they kind of be so differently colored. And female Diana monkeys will actually pursue, uh, produce specific uh, alarm calls, alert calls and contact calls, depending on the predators or who they're talking to, things like that. And the flexibility in female calls may actually be better than the males. So that's pretty interesting. And other fo uh, forest residents actually will, like the yellow cast hornbill, actually use, can discriminate uh, against these calls from the Diana monkeys and use them to react. So if it's, that call means a leopard, so I better react accordingly versus an owl or an eagle. So that's pretty cool. Uh, these guys communicate both in local groups and distant competitors with different alarm calls and stuff like that. Diana monkeys are also known to produce loud noises to make other monkeys aware of the leopards and other competitors in the area. So they are quite uh, loud and proud in that regard. So let's have a look at these cute little babies here as we talk about uh, their gestation stuff. So groups you typically consist of a single male and a number of reproducing females and their infants. And in good condition, and a female can re uh, reproduce annually. Uh, gestation for these guys usually lasts about six, uh, five months, but they will nurse for another six months after being born. And notably, they only give birth to one infant. Although the young uh, is born in a fairly well-developed condition, they are able to grasp their mother with open eyes. And they're also quite, uh, mothers are quite anxious and possessive of their babies, and they really let young infants leave their side. And as they grow, they become very playful. And in terms of uh, as they age, juveniles will typically reach sexual maturity of age to three years old. And daughters will remain in their social groups uh, for the rest of their lives, so the same one as their mother. But males will leave their natal group shortly after reaching sexual maturity to go, go around and find their own group, which is pretty interesting. So as I mentioned, these guys are endangered because of habitat degradation and hunting for bushmeat. But it's also um, evidence that these guys can carry diseases as well, such as yellow fever and tuberculosis, which can affect obviously their populations and people as well. And native tribes actually uh, poach these guys as actually like a luxury meat and a commodity, which is not good for an endangered species, but I think they're still really, really beautiful regardless. Really, really awesome animals, as you can see here. Really, really pretty. So uh, next, we've got our last uh, primate. So we've got here um, the Cerberus, uh, I think it's um, Cerberus, I believe you say that, Crested Macaque. So really, really cool guy here. So this is the Crested Macaque here, also done by Mega Kebab. Uh, these guys also known as the Crested Black Macaque or the Sulawesi Crested Macaque. Uh, these guys are an old world monkey that live in the uh, northeastern tip of the Indonesian island of Sulawesi, as well as a few small neighboring islands. So these guys, as you can see, they've got a dark body to them. They're pretty much almost jet black completely. And they have a small crest on there as well. They have, uh, to which give their name, the crest of macaque. They also have quite a long muzzle and high cheekbones and things like that. And weirdly, they have strikingly red-brown eyes, which is very interesting. 
And they also have an ape-like appearance because they have pretty much of a stigial tail, which a lot, some macaques don't have a tail. And these guys can reach in a total body length of about 44 centimeters or 17 inches to 60 centimeters or 24 inches and weigh between 3.6 and 10 kilograms or between 8 to 23 pounds. And actually one of the smaller macaque species, which is interesting. And they have a life expectancy of about 15 to 20 years in the wild, which is really interesting. Uh, these guys, in terms of their ecology, these guys are diurnal rainforest dwellers. And they're also primarily terrestrial, so they spend about 60% of their day on the ground uh, socializing and looking for food, while they uh, sleep and search for food in the trees as well, the other 40% of the time. Uh, in terms of their diet, these guys are mainly frugivores, uh, with 70% of their diet consisting of fruits, but they will also eat leaves, buds, seeds, fungus, small birds, bird eggs, uh, insects, worms, snails, and occasionally the small frogs or insects, so that, uh, lizards, I mean, so it's pretty interesting. So these guys, like other species of macaques, they are uh, quite social. They live in groups of occasionally up to uh, 25 animals, 5 to 25, but they can actually even get up to 75 animals. Typically, the small groups will have a single adult male, or larger groups can have up to four adult males. But however, the adult-female ratio is typically always four to one. So every male, there's at least four females. Young adults are also forced to leave, um, young adult males are forced to leave their birth group upon maturity. And they will sometimes form uh, bachelor groups of only males, which is pretty interesting. And like other species of monkeys, they have lots of uh, ways to communicate. So they have um, various sounds and gestures. And similar to like a lot of species, they have long canine teeth. And if they smile at you, that typically means like, hey, get out of my way. Uh, these guys are typically uh, quite promiscuous monkeys. And both males and females will mate with multiple partners. Um, and the recept uh, receptivity of the females is actually clearly indicated by the swelling and redness of their butt here. Which basically says, hey, I'm ready for business. Um, and it kind of, when it grows, uh, glows and not glows, but... Uh, kind of pumps up and redness of the buttocks kind of show that hey i'm ready to mate which is pretty interesting and um let's have a look at little babies here so gestation for the species typically lasts about 174 days and the birth is usually of a single offspring like you see here and um it happens in spring when food uh, is most plentiful and young animals are typically nursed for about a year and they become fully mature at about four years old and females actually mature somewhat sooner than the uh, males which is pretty interesting. And if you guys know a little bit about these guys, uh, they're critically endangered, sadly, as they're hunted for their meat and also uh, clearing for their forests and things like that. And it's actually estimated that the population on Sulawesi is estimated between 4,000 and 6,000. So there's a population of about 100,000 monkeys in Bakan. There's lots of surveys looking for these guys. And if you remember that monkey selfie, if you remember that monkey selfie, there was a big hoo-ha in the news about it a couple of years ago. I think it was in 2014. Mm -hmm. Um, it was a selfie taken by this species, which was a um, celibus uh, crested macaque, or like a just a crested macaque here. So that was really interesting. It, did, it was talked a lot about copyright, but it was really cool to see that monkey selfie, and I think it's really, really cute. And sadly, this species is critically endangered, but I hope they definitely do better um, with conservation efforts and protecting of the habitats and people not killing them for meat and things like that. Still a really, really awesome animal. So we're going to be moving on now. We've got our next animal here. We've got a return of an old favorite. Uh, this one was done by, um, obviously, Mega Kebab did the um, macaque. But now we're moving on to another remake of uh, Older Mod by Leaf and Monsoon. And we have got there the Koa Prey. So a really, really awesome little remaster of it here, which uh, really shows how much of it's, it's improved. So the Koa Prey, uh, these guys are a type of little-known... Uh, critically endangered bovid from Southeast Asia, which are really, really cool. So you can see here, they're believed to be a close relative of animals such as the aurochs, gara, and bangtang, and they're quite a large ungulate. They reach sizes comparable to the wild water buffalo. Typically, um, these guys can reach between 2.1 and 2.3 meters, or 6.9 to 7.5 feet long, along the head and body, and not counting their tail, and they can stand between 1.7 or 1.9 or 5.6 or 6.2 meters uh, tall at the shoulder. And they reportedly weigh between 680 to 910 kilograms, or 5, 1,500 to uh, 2,000 pounds, with unverified reports of individuals getting up to 1,700 kilograms, or about 3,700 pounds. But those are, as I mentioned, are verified. 
They're quite distinct from other species, as you can see here. They've got long, tall, narrow bodies with a uh, long legs and a humped back there. They've also got quite a large uh, dewlap there. And one of the main differences is that they've got these long horns and they've got like almost these, um, I don't know what you would call them, they're like fraying bits coming out of the horns, as you can see like that. And they're also angled up with it frays at the end. And this typically starts to fray at about 12 years of age. And you can see the difference between the male and the females here. Males have much larger horns and are much bigger. Females are a little bit smaller, daintier, and more brownish compared to the grayish and blackish male. So let's have a talk about the female while we're, they're making noise. So um, in terms of the habitat, these guys are typically found in uh, Cambodia, southern Laos, uh, Thailand, and we east western Vietnam. And they're thought to be extinct in most of these areas and potentially extinct in general, as we'll get into. And it seems their habitat, they tended to like to live in par uh, partially forested hills, and they eat mainly grass. Uh, or their preferred habitat is open forests and savannas near thick monsoonal forests. And they are diurnal, so they typically eat in the open at night. And, um, oh, that means they're nocturnal. They eat in the open at night and under the forest cover during the day. And they typically um, travel up to 15 kilometers in at night. So um, they also can live in herds of up to 20 individuals and are usually led by a single female. These herds typically consist of cows and their calves, uh, but the bulls uh, do join during the dry season. And um, during that time, all the males are typically, when they're off by themselves, they'll often form bachelor herds, so they're just other males. And many herds are also known to join up and break up and rejoin and things like that. And have been known to mix with bangtang and wild uh, water buffalo, so that's pretty interesting. As I mentioned, these guys are um, grazed on grasses, but they'll eat bamboo, palong, and kum, and they'll also uh, spend a lot of time looking for waterholes and salt licks. And in terms of their conservation, these guys are sadly, there's believed to be fewer, if they're alive, less than 250 left, and some people that believe are already extinct. And um, it's believed to be this was attributed to lots of uncontrolled hunting by locals and soldiers for meat. Uh, ho uh, horns and skin were used for Chinese medicines. And also diseases spread from domestic cattle and um, loss of habitat due to agriculture and logging. So that could be one of the many factors that contributed to their extinction. So in terms of ongoing conservation efforts, they do, if there are populations, they're believed to be in places that are actually national parks. So that's quite good. And that's why the list is critically endangered. I believe the last sighting of this guys was around the 1960s. Um, something like that. And there have been surveys since... Uh, 1983 was the last time one was seen, I mean. And there have been large uh, surveys to try and find um, living koa prone. Which is... Uh, they typically found the right habitat and stuff like that. But really, they just haven't really spotted one yet. Though considering how big these parks and how rare these animals are, it's very likely that these guys can still be hiding out in the um, Cambodian mountains, for example. But yeah, just a really, really awesome species, and it's cool that they're um, getting a little highlight here, so even though they're critically endangered, or potentially extinct. But yeah, if you guys are into your lost species, this would be definitely a species you'd know about, and a really cool species that obviously people would like to look for. So really, really awesome animal here. Leaf and Monsoon did a really wonderful job with um, Curl Pro. And next we're moving on to another species, this is by Leaf and Mega Game and Rex, who has remade um, an, their Nyon Crocodile again. So we're going to be talking about these guys, but we're going to just skim through it because we've already covered this guy four or five times. So this is the Nile Crocodile. So these guys are a large crocodile that live in uh, Africa, native to freshwater, and they can be found in many different countries. They can be found typically wide throughout um, Sub-Saharan Africa. And they could, though they typically occur in eastern, uh, central, and southern regions where they live in different environments such as lakes, rivers, swamps, and marshlands. And um, although they're capable of living in salty environments, they typically do not like to live in salty water and prefer fresh water. But they will occasionally live in deltas and brackish waters. The range of the species actually once stretched northwards towards the Nile as far as the Nile Delta, but it's believed to be due to people. Uh, they've become locally extinct there. Also, some other areas as well, they've become locally extinct. Um, on average, the adult male Nile crocodile can reach between 2.9 and 4.4 meters, or 9 feet 8 inches, or 14 feet 5 inches in length, and they weigh between 225 and 414 uh, kilograms, or basically 496 to 900, uh, 914 pounds. It actually includes stomach stones as well. But, however, there have been some pretty extreme specimens, um, 
that have exceeded 6.1 meters or 20 feet in length and get up to about 1,089 kilograms or about 2,401 pounds have been recorded. And they're actually the largest freshwater predator in Africa. And they may not be considered the sig and they may be considered the second largest extant reptile or the largest living reptile species, second only to the saltwater crocodile. And these guys are also quite sexually dimorphic. So these guys, uh, the females are usually 30% smaller than the males. And you can see here, like most other species of crocodilians, they have large osteoderms or bone skin uh, scoots on their back, which is both for protection and thermoregulation, potentially for a, a few other different things. But yeah, it look, makes them look really, really awesome. So similar to other species of crocodiles, these guys are apex predators and can be quite aggressive and are generalists. They'll feed on fish, reptiles, birds, and mammals. That includes obviously things like um, wildebeest, zebra, small birds, reptiles, pretty much everything. They are ambush predators and can wait for hours, days, or even weeks uh, for a suitable moment to attack and are actually quite agile and they typically wait around for a prey to come in the perfect time and then they strike, bite down with their large jaws and uh, powerful jaws to attack their prey and then... Um, obviously have a good meal and um, Nile crocodiles have this very powerful bite similar to other crocodilians and they have sharp conical teeth that help them bite into the flesh of the animal and it's basically almost impossible to get away once a crocodile has bitten you and they often will do a death roll as well so they roll around with prey and it could either mess them up or rip them apart to help them better pull apart prey and uh, better eat it so instead of drowning it so these guys are Contrary to what most people think, they're also relatively social. So these guys will have a social hierarchy and they share basking spots and food sources like the big carcasses or schools of fish. Though there's a strict hierarchy which is determined by size. So typically the larger you are, the higher ranking you are on the social group. And um, they actually tend to respect the older crocodiles, which tend to be the big bosses, which big males. So large old males are typically at the top of that hierarchy and then obviously um goes down as with age and size like things like that and crocodiles will respect this order though sometimes when it's infringed they'll often hurt each other even kill each other if it's disturbed which is pretty interesting and as we talk about gestation we can have a look at these cute little guys so in terms of um breeding these guys uh will lay eggs females will lay eggs in a nest and they will put it on the bank of um the river and kind of guard them takes a few months for them to obviously hatch and things like that and once these little hatchings they'll be protected by their mother from a certain period of time and once these babies are born they typically self-sufficient uh, other than their mother protecting them they'll often be uh, feed on like small frogs and insects things like that and then eventually as they grow up to adults they'll be feeding on um, larger animals so large birds uh, livestock sometimes like large uh, mammals things like that which is pretty interesting and um, they're actually considered one of the most dangerous species uh, of crocodile in the world. And they're actually responsible for hundreds of deaths each year, simply because they're so common and there's so many people around the waterways. And they are common uh, and not endangered, but some areas have been declines in the species and regionally extinct. So like parts of like the deltas and the Nile Delta. Some areas are considered locally extinct or are declining, but overall the least concern. So this is a really, really awesome species and quite common. Uh, really really cool to talk about these guys i really do love um, crocodiles uh, and i've already talked about nile crocodiles like five times so i've just given a good summary here but um mega gaming rex seemed to have remade this guy again i believe he remade it from the spectacle caiman and definitely a nice addition i think that looks rather awesome really really cool so we're going to be moving on so leaf and mega gaming rex really did a wonderful job with these guys let's see the female here we're going to be moving on to our last animal so this last one is we're going back in time a little bit uh, we've got the uh, step lion or the cave lion by Gaboy and um, Genora Pizza, which is pretty awesome. So these guys are also known as the step lion or the European uh, Eurasian cave lion or the Euro European cave uh, lion. These guys are a species of lion or panthera that evolved in Europe uh, during the um, interglacial about 600,000 years ago. So uh, these guys are very, very interesting. We know about the evolution. So these guys typically... Uh, split off um, from east they distributed from east africa around the uh, middle pleistocene and then they gave ride to an early species called panthera fossilaris which uh, evolved from this species about 460,000 years ago and spread from europe all across eurasia and even into parts of like alaska 
And an early population of them then split off into the American lion, which is very, very cool. And Amer American lions are quite big, as we'll get into. So these guys excavated from Poland, they believed, so they typically lived between kind of 450,000 years ago and are believed to go on extinct about 14,000 years ago. And they actually believed to survive in Beringia, which was the uh, part of Alaska and kind of eastern Siberia, where um, it was all kind of grasslands. I believe they may have lived up there but, uh, to about 13,000 years ago. And these guys, uh, as evidenced by micro, um, microchondrial DNA, these guys actually split from American lions about 34,000 years ago, so quite a bit of evolution going on there, which is awesome. So in terms of characteristics, you can see here, a lot of them we actually know from cave paintings, since people watched these guys and painted them. It seems that these guys actually didn't really have that large of a mane, since there are portraits of these guys with a scrotum and uh, not a large mane, so it's very possible that the large stereotypical lion mane may actually only be a thing in African lions which is pretty interesting. Uh, these guys are also thought to be one of the larger lion species. Uh, there's a specimen of an adult male that got about 1.2 meters or um, 3 foot 11 at shoulder height and a body length of about 2.1 meters or 6 foot 11, while their tail was similar in size without the tail. So similar in size to modern lions, but the size of this male has also gotten quite bigger. There was another male that was about 8 foot 2 inches long or about 2.5 meters long in terms of body length. And actually this estimated size of this lion was actually about... Um, 339 kilograms or 747 pounds for the largest specimens and they're actually believed to be about 12 percent bigger or a little bit bigger than your typical um african lion but they're actually still believed to be smaller than the earlier um panthera fossilaris and the american lion which both were very large species they could potentially get up to 350 but maybe even like 400 kilograms i've heard some estimates of some really large uh africa uh, american lions that got that big which is pretty cool and comparable to a lot of other species, uh, let's see if we can find another one that's walking around. So that's the male. Have a look at this female here. So uh, these guys also have a relatively longer and narrow snout compared to extant lions. And despite this, they do not really have that many big difference in their morphology. And like modern lions, uh, females are typically a little bit smaller than the males. And um, we actually have a little bit in terms of their um, DNA that shows that these guys... Uh, in comparison in here as well, these guys were actually quite similar in color to modern lions, though they were slightly lighter. And in addition, the cave lion mage actually had a very thick and dense undercoat, which had a uh, comprising closed and compressed yellowish to white uh, wavy down here. And then they had a smaller mass of darker colored guard heads, which was potentially an adaption to survive in the cooler climates of the Ice Age where they lived. So that's really, really cool. Let's have a look at this female here. So in terms of their distribution and habitat, we're going to talk about this here. So these guys lived in a wide range of places. They had a continuous population from Europe to Alaska over the Beringian land bridge across the range of the Mammoth Steppe. So they lived from the Iberian Peninsula, Central and Europe, they found in Britain as well, up to Northern Eurasia into Canada and Alaska. And the oldest known fossil of a um, cave lion from the you could tell was about 62,400 years ago and the youngest one's about 11,000 years ago so there's quite a big range so they're quite common in Beringia and places like that so the youngest ones we know are about 4, 14,000 or 11,000 years old and they actually we have remains of uh, bones of these guys found with reindeers Pleistocene horses and wolves which were dated back to about 13,000 to 21,000 years ago and in 2008, there was actually a well-preserved mature cave lion that was found with still clumps of hair. And it seems that these guys typically preferred open habitats such as steppes and grasslands. So the mammoth steppe was really perfect for these guys. And they would have occurred in open woodlands uh, sometimes as well. So in terms of discoveries as well, we have a few frozen specimens of babies, which is really, really cool. So it's believed that these guys, um, these little babies were frozen and were barely a week old by the times of their deaths, as they had not had milk teeth yet. But it's believed that these guys, um, they were hidden in a den, but they were not strong enough. They were hidden in a den until they were strong enough to follow their parents. But whatever, they were killed in a landslide and got frozen, So, uh, which is pretty sad for them, but allows us to learn a lot about these species as well. And we're going to talk about their paleobiology. So let's go back to the mail while we talk about their paleobiology. So these guys, as I mentioned, they liked boreal forests and the mammoth steppe, which uh, was very open habitats. And they were one of the keystone species and uh, being one of, as being one of the apex predators, very similar to modern lions today in the African uh, plains. 
in the um, mammal step these guys would have been top predators along with gray wolves cave hyenas and brown bears and um, large amount of bones belonging to peace belayer have actually been found in caves and um, where bones of also cave hyenas cave bears uh, and uh, paleolithic artifacts have been found so um that's kind of how we know that's where they get the name cave lion but more accurate if you want to be more accurate to where they lived people want to use step lion because they lived on the mammoth step so step lion works better than cave lion in that regard so they would have lived with cave hyenas wolves and um, brown bears and things like that and would have been the top predators of those ecosystems it's unknown whether these guys were social like modern lions but there is some evidence that show that they may be solitary and some evidence that they may be probably just depends on the particular individual groups sometimes it's just kind of we don't really know that we also know that from bone collagen samples extracted from uh, these guys that these guys would have in that cave bear cubs and uh, reindeer and other types of deer would actually been quite common in cave lion diets so that's pretty interesting and then later cave lions seem to have uh, preyed mostly on uh, reindeer so up to the brink of the extinction so it's very likely that these guys um, would have eaten a lot of reindeer as a lot of the other megafauna they may have fed on potentially went extinct for example and other possible prey species in the height of the ice age for these guys would have been things such as giant me me oh, like megaloceros or the giant deer uh, red deer wild horses muskox aurochs uh, wizent uh, steppe bison young woolly rhinos and young woolly mammoths and these guys actually would have likely competed for prey with the um, european ice age leopard uh, as well as cave hyenas cave, uh, brown bears cave bears or mostly herbivores wolves and cave hyenas things like that and potentially humans as well and actually um isotopes suggest that these guys were primarily consuming reindeer but being a lion beggars can't be choosers they probably just ate a little bit of everything but yeah look how beautiful this guy is really nice to see a scientifically accurate cave lion come into the game or step lion as we'll use and Giboy and uh, genora pizza really did a wonderful job portraying this extinct species and um cool to see some obviously um extinct animals and people that like your ice age parks or de-extinction this would be a perfect animal to have in your zoos as a companion to like most of your ice age megafauna so yeah really really awesome uh job by everyone who made their mods today so um yeah i uh really 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 hope you guys enjoyed this video hope you guys like and subscribe always remember to hit the little bell icon to get notified about anything so yeah hope you guys enjoyed this video hope you guys like and subscribe and bye bye